Take a look at this image. There's blue tape everywhere. In this video, I'm going to share with you the significance of the blue tape in buying a new home. Let's dive in. Whether you're a first-time home buyer or a seasoned homeowner, understanding what to look out for in the blue tape process is a crucial aspect in new construction home buying process. Before we jump into the blue tape process, let me explain to you what that is, when that is conducted, and by whom it's conducted with. When a new construction home is nearing completion, the builders will invite the buyers for a pre-closing inspection. This inspection allows buyers to identify any imperfections, defects, or unfinished work in the property. To mark these issues, the blue painter's tape is often used, and hence it's called the blue tape process. This usually happens in what builders call the new home orientation, which usually happens between five to seven days prior to closing. This new home orientation is conducted by the superintendent of that community, and usually my buyers will join me in this walkthrough. If my buyers are unable to attend this walkthrough, I will attend on their behalf and document the walkthrough with either video or with photos. So what should you be looking out for during this blue tape process? Let's go through some of the key points to keep in mind. Number one, exterior inspections. We will walk around the property and carefully examine the exterior walls, the windows, doors, roofs, and garage doors. We will be looking out for any cracks, gaps, or any signs of poor workmanship. We will check the grading and the landscaping to ensure proper drainage away from the foundation. We will verify that all exterior features such as exterior outlets, exterior lighting, and exterior faucets are all in great working conditions. Here are some examples of what my buyers found in an exterior inspection. Cracks in stucco. Something for you to take a note of. If that crack is bigger than a penny fitting into that crack, then you definitely need to make sure that you note it down and bring it to the superintendent's attention. However, if that crack line is less than a penny fitting in, then it's not worth the time for the builder to fix it. Unfunctional light fixtures, unfunctional faucets, grading and landscaping not properly done so that the water drainage is not going away from your foundation, but in fact going towards your foundation. Cracks in the windows, dent in garage doors. My buyer had to wait four to five weeks to get a replacement garage door because we found a dent in their garage door when we did this new home orientation. Number two, interior inspection. We will inspect each room thoroughly, including walls, ceilings, windows, doors, and flooring. We will be paying attention to paint quality, drywall finishes, and floor installations. We will test all electrical outlets, switches, and lights to ensure that they are all working properly, such as faucets, showers, and toilets, for leaks, proper installation, and water pressure. We will open and close all windows and doors to ensure smooth operation. This includes all the cabinets as well as drawers. Here are some examples of what my buyers found in an interior inspection. Scratches on cabinets cabinets not closing properly, or if they had upgraded to soft closing cabinets but they're not closing softly. Cabinet doors not aligned, scratches on windows, paint retouch, and for example, I've seen where there has been some painting done where they used a mix and match of different paint finishes. So on one side of the room, they used matte finish paint and the other side of the room, they used glossy paint. So you could definitely see the difference and that you know that there's definitely wrong painting that was painted on these particular walls. Number three. HVAC systems, water heater, and appliances. We will test the heating, the ventilation, and the air conditioning system to ensure they cool and heat the home efficiently. We will test the water heating system. Now for these new builds now, we have tankless water systems. So most of these new builds that I do inspections for, they have a tankless water system installed in the garage. It's very important for us to make sure that when we're testing that the tankless water heater is indeed on and set at that certain temperature. It's usually about 120 degrees or so to make sure that all the water heating is indeed working and this tankless water heater is properly installed. We will inspect all appliances, including the stove, the oven, 
the microwave, the dishwasher, the refrigerator, and the laundry systems, the washer and dryer, to make sure it's properly installed and functioning properly. This is also a good time to make sure that there's no cosmetic damages on all these appliances. Here are some examples of what my buyers found in this HVAC system, water heater, and appliances inspection. The water was not heating up, and that was because we had to actually go to the garage and ensure that the tankless water system was in fact on and it was set to the certain temperature. When we conducted this inspection, the tankless water heater outside in the garage was not turned on. So obviously we had to turn it on and get that system going in order to test the water heating and to make sure that the water was heating very quickly. Dishwasher was not properly installed. I've come across a lot of dishwashers that's not properly installed. And what I mean by that is when you open the dishwasher and if you feel that it's very wobbly and unstable, that means that the dishwasher has not been properly installed. Number four, finishing touches. We will check for any paint touch up, trim work, and caulking issues throughout the whole house. We'll pay attention to the quality of the finishes, such as the countertop, the flooring, and cabinetry. We will inspect the installation of light fixtures and ceiling fans and any other requested upgrades. Here are some examples of what my buyers found in the finishing touches. Lack of caulking around the sinks, the bathtubs, and the showers. Scratches on the countertop. And right now, everyone's choosing quartz, so scratches on the quartz countertops. Ceiling fans not properly installed or not functioning. Number five, safety measures. We ensure smoke detectors, carbon monoxide detectors, and fire extinguishers are installed in the appropriate locations and are properly functioning. We confirm that handrails are securely installed in staircases and in balconies. We will check that all windows and sliders have screens and that all the locks are in working condition. Here are some examples of what my buyers found in the safety measures. Unstable staircase railings missing window screens as well as slider screens, unfunctioning door latches. I had a buyer that had to wait an additional one to two weeks after closing to get their slider screens because there was a delay in getting those reordered. By the way, if we haven't met yet, konnichiwa, my name is Kaori Nagao, your global real estate advisor, helping you find your new home. Whether it's a new construction home or a resale home, anywhere in the world, I'll be more than happy to help you through your home buying process. I really appreciate you watching my videos. I hope they're educational for you. And keep watching and engage with me. Now let's keep going. Now that you know what to look out for in this blue tape process, it's now very important for you to be able to communicate these findings effectively to the builder. Here are a few tips for a successful inspection. Number one, be organized. Bring a checklist and make notes during your inspection. This will help you remember and document all the issues you find. Number two, take pictures. Visual evidence is very powerful when discussing these concerns with the builder. Take clear photos of the problems and attach them with your inspection report. Comment blue tape if you're in the process of buying a new home or if you'd like to buy a new home in the future. Number three, be thorough but reasonable. While it's essential to address all the legitimate issues, remember to focus on significant concerns that affects your home's functionality or safety. I would suggest to avoid nitpicking on minor cosmetic imperfections. Number four, communicate effectively. Provide a detailed written report to the builder, including all your findings with the corresponding location within the house. It's a good idea to also attach some of the photos that you want to add in this report. After conducting the new home orientation and the blue tape process, the superintendent will regroup with my buyers and I, usually at the kitchen island, to now come up with a list of all the issues that we found throughout that time. And sometimes that list is a short list and sometimes it could be a long list but it's very important for the superintendent to write down all the punch lists so that the superintendent could go back and use that punch list to go over all the things that will need to be addressed before closing. Usually a day or two before closing, we will regroup with the superintendent to make sure that the punch list has been fully completed. We will go down the list and make sure that they have completed all those repairs that they had promised us to. 
Now remember that there may be some items on the punch list that will not be fully repaired or fully completed until after closing. So just to give you an example, that may be that screen that was missing from one of the windows or the slider. Maybe it's gonna take them a week or two to get to the house. Or maybe it was that dent garage door that needs to be fully replaced and it's gonna take the builder four to six weeks to get that brand new garage door to be reinstalled for you. As long as you're okay and comfortable knowing that that will happen after closing, then yes, we can move forward and go to closing, the day of the closing where we actually sign, fund, and record. Now, I've had some clients that were not comfortable closing until everything on that punch list was completed. And you guys, that's totally okay. Yes, the builders might be on a specific timeline, but myself as your buyer's agent, if you as the buyer is not comfortable waiting for some of these outstanding punch list items, it's okay to delay the closing date. And I've actually recently done that because my client was uncomfortable waiting for this missing piece or missing hardware, whatever that was missing from that punch list. So what we did is we actually extended the closing date until that particular item on the punch list was fully completed. So just know that you're able to be flexible on the closing date and don't feel that you have that pressure from the builder to close at a certain day because of course the builder has a timeline and they want to finish and complete these homes. But as a buyer, if you're not comfortable, you know, closing until everything on your punch list is completed, that's okay. And we will wait and we will extend that closing date for you. So I just want you guys to know that because a lot of my buyers didn't know that you could actually delay the closing date. So make sure you know that and you obviously consult your buyer's agent when you have any questions regarding the closing date and regarding these blue tape process. For more videos about new construction, check out any of these videos around my screen. And know that I actually have a playlist on new construction, so you're welcome to watch all those videos. I really appreciate you watching and make sure you smash that subscribe button so other viewers like yourself could find me online. Again, thank you so much for watching. This is Kaori Nagao, your global real estate advisor. See you on the next one.